Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Oh, come on, that wasn't very loud. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. There, it's much better. Good to have everybody here this morning. Um, great to have everybody watching online as well. Great to have you here, however that may be. Trying something a little different this morning. Thank you for, to Pat for letting me use this uh, headset. Um, what uh, if, you, if you look in your bulletin, you can see we have uh, a few announcements. Um, Bible, uh, the big announcement would be Sunday school for grades 1 through 5 will start on September 10th at 10 a.m. If you're interested, I believe you know who Dr. Gary is. Judy over there, get in touch. I'm sure they've already been in touch with some, but if you feel compelled to help, let them know. And I want to thank everybody who has done the Portico Safe Sanctuary training. Um, please, uh, if you haven't done it yet, take time to do that. And uh, give me your, print me off a copy of your certificate so I can put it on file. And it is good for four years, so you don't got to do it every year. Um, Bible study Wednesday at 6 at Friendly. We're going to be wrapping up Life Lessons from Romans, and then we'll start another study. What that is yet, I don't know, but as soon as we have it. Uh, tomorrow night we'll have board meetings, trustees at 6, and then the administrative meeting will be at 7.30. Uh, September 17th, uh, we're going to show Jesus Revolution at Friendly at 6. All are welcome. And then Charge Conference will be September 27th, a Wednesday at 5 here. And I want to thank everybody for helping me get all that paperwork filled out and everything. I believe I'm about 95% done with it, which... It's exactly, I wanted to either be at 95% or 100% by the beginning of September. So we're almost done. And that gives me plenty of time to have everything turned in. So thank you for that. And one other reminder, um, you'll be getting letter, a letter in the mail from the church if you haven't already. It's from the membership team. I know last week I mentioned um, if you're interested in becoming a member to let me know. And please remember that there's a difference between baptism and membership. I learned that back in 2017. I was baptized in the church when I was a kid. And when I became an adult, I assumed I was a member as well, but I wasn't. So there's the baptismal covenant membership vow. And we do recognize baptisms from other denominations. So if you've been baptized, you know, and still want to be a, and want to be a member, let me know, and we will start that process. But you'll be getting a letter in the mail, um, and in that letter, we just ask you to please take some time to fill it out and either bring it back here to us or even close the stamp and sit. But that's important so that we have the most accurate information on file, which is a conference requirement, but then it's also necessary for any decisions, voting, anything down the line that might ever come up. we got to have that information because... They'll ask for that, but um, would anybody from the membership team want to add anything or I cover it? But if you have any questions, let me know, and we'll be glad to help you. Thank you for your consideration on getting that done. Um, 
Any other announcements? Testing. <laughs> uh, I'm just going to reiterate what he said. Tonight is our first night back for the school year for our youth group, and we're having a kickoff pool party at Ray and Judy's house, and they're full. So all kids are welcome, sixth grade and older, even younger, for the pool party. So when we start youth group, even starting next week and the following weeks, it's, it's usually sixth grade and up, but anybody can come to the pool party tonight. So food will be provided. Bring your swimsuit and your towels. Six o'clock, Davenport. And then um, two other real quick things about youth group. Um, in the back, we put a sign-up sheet for kind of our schedule for the fall. If you'd like to sign up to, like, make food or something like that, uh, if you'd like to help participate in some way, you can sign up for that. And then next Sunday, we're going to be going on the river with our youth group with some boats that people have in our church, Mom and Dad and um, Shirlene and Kenny. So thank you ahead of time. And we're going to be going out, and that's probably going to be about 6 o'clock too. So food's always provided. Good times always provided, too. So thank you. Thank you very much. That sounds like a lot of fun. And any other announcements? Uh, whoever, one of you two. Uh, there's going to be a painting in wreath making. Okay. Yeah, they're going to make a scarecrow face for a wreath. And if you're wanting to participate, uh, see Teresa. Uh, the, the sign up back there. That's at 5 o'clock on the 13th. Um, I just want to let everybody know am I on? I am okay. Um, I couldn't hear myself. Um, for the ladies going for their dinner this coming Thursday, this would be the first one for the United Methodist women or any woman of the church. You don't even have to come to our meetings if you want to go. We're going to Da Vinci's. Um, we will meet here at the church at five o'clock, carpool down, and then unload again at the church when we get back. So this Thursday, five o'clock. We're going to Da Vinci's. Any other announcements? Oh, go ahead. Sorry, I didn't see over there. I know there's been a lot of announcements. I'm so sorry. Um, so next week, we're starting the Children's Sunday School, which is before church. Um, and I'm going to go on a limb and out on faith. We are going to have nursery and children's church offered during the service as well. Um, as of right now, I have four people who have officially gone through the training and said they are willing to help. I am praying that we will have more volunteers. My goal is eight so that you just have to do this once a month. Um, so please invite elementary age kids. So during church, ages zero to fifth grade should have a place to go during our service. Um, and I just feel like God, this is a new movement, I think, here in our church, and I'm really excited about it. Um, I know for me and probably a lot of us in this room, you're here because someone invested in you when you were a child. Um, and I think it's important. So thank you for investing in the future of God's kingdom. Thank you. And he's right. Most of us, if probably if not all of us, are here because somebody, well, somebody had to have gotten us to church. And I, I am the product of being part of an active youth group when I was a kid and in also vacation Bible schools and church camps. And, you know, I'm the product of those things. And they are very, very important, they're crucial for the future.
So please, if you haven't done your safe sanctuary or have any questions about how to do it, please let Gary know, let me know, and, you know, pray, pray, pray about it. If God leads you to want to help, please, please answer the call. It's not for us, it's for these kids and the future kids. Any other announcements? All right, if there's not, then let, let us go ahead and open with prayer. We'll follow that with the Lord's Prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we praise you, Lord. We honor you, Lord, for bringing us together this morning to worship, to fellowship. Lord, help us to focus our sights on you. Help us to look forward and not backward. Help us to let go of resentments. Help us to let go of hurt, pain, Lord, that can lead to stumbling blocks, Lord. Pave a path for us in our hearts. Remove those things that can keep us from fully experiencing your love and your mercy your purpose for us, Lord. Help us to let go of those distractions that keep us from, from your, you and your love, Lord. Help us to remember what it's really all about. It's all about you and serving you, Lord. Help us to hold closely the many blessings that you offer us, Lord. Help us to remember that you're always there with us, walking alongside us. You're there to open doors. You're there to, to show us the way. And now we pray as you taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And I invite you to stand and we'll have this responsive reading. And as you, as we read this and respond. Allow God to speak to you through these words. Allow Him to humble you to, to really look at yourself and to remember what this is all about. And to think about why are you here? We gather, to get, we gather as a community of compassion and hope. Jesus calls us to care for each other. By this caring and sharing, we will be known as followers of Jesus. Lord, open our hearts and minds this day to your world. Amen. Now I'll uh, turn it over to the praise team. We're so glad you're here. Worship is quite simple. It's just telling God, thank you and I love you. And that's what we're going to do today.
You know, Jesus is better than anything else this world can offer us. Thank you. 
to your neighbor. Thank you. Let's give them all another round of, uh, of applause. You know, here in a here in a in a in a few few minutes here in a few minutes we're going to be in Matthew chapter 16 verses 21 through 28, and um, I want to share with the young people here this morning. I'm sure you all know, or maybe you play sports or you're involved in cheerleading, or dance, or maybe you sing, you're part of a choir, but you're involved in something. And you know that practicing is not always easy. But it's always worth it in the end, isn't it? getting a hole-in-one, or winning a cheerleading trophy. Makes it all worthwhile, doesn't it? Well, God wants us to remember that we have work to do. And it's not always easy. 
But in the end, it's worth it. As I said, it takes a lot of hard work to be involved in athletics or or any any extracurricular activity. It takes a lot of hard work and you gotta have discipline. You gotta practice when you don't want to practice. And you also have to sacrifice. Sacrifice time at home, uh, time with your friends. But in the end, it's all worth it. All that care that you're taking, all that, you know, because you have to be careful. You know, if you're a runner, you got to be careful and not overdo it. Because that can take you out of the race. And, um, you know, Jesus, we're going to read here in a a few, about how Jesus spoke to his disciples, warning them of the sacrifice that they were going to have to make for him. He warned them not to be concerned with the things of the world, but focus on those things that would matter. And, you know, it's, it's easy, no matter your age, you want, you, you know, when you've got your eyes set on something that you want, you, you want it, so you'll you work toward it. Well, whatever it is that we want, we can't let those things, we can't let sports, we can't let any of our passion outweigh meaning be more important than our worshiping of God. He has to take the number one spot in our hearts. Because you know, at the end of the day, all those trophies, all those successes, years down the road, look back and smile at them. You'll love telling the stories. But at the end of the day, you're going to learn that you're going to learn what really matters. And what really matters is putting God first. And And so just remember that no matter the same kind of sacrifice that you have to put into athletics or any kind of activity, God wants us to put that same kind of sacrifice into Him. But remember, when you're prioritizing, you've got to put Him up here. And everything else is down here. Because just like all that practice is worth it and it's worth getting that trophy and all that glory, what's even more important is the glory that you're going to get from knowing the Lord and serving Him. That's going to be even better than any gold medal or any trophy. So it's my prayer that not only for the young people, but all of us, that we will allow God to enter our hearts and help us be willing to live for Him and remember all of the sacrifices He made for us. And let us all just be thankful. I hope we can all be thankful for His love and for all that He does in our lives. What what praises do you have this morning? Yes, that was going to be one of mine, that we have Danny Pancake back with us this morning. It's a blessing to have him back. It's a blessing to have Mason and Sadie here with us.
And it's always nice to have Colby here. Didn't want to forget you. But it's a blessing to have you, you all home. Um, any prayer concerns we need to remember? We need to, re you probably might have gotten the email about it. We need to remember Katie Doig in our prayers. She recovered from a car accident. I mean, not a motorcycle accident. Motorcycle accident. Any uh, other prayer concerns? Debbie? We need to remember our, our friend Wesley. Debbie's grandson in our prayers. The praise to have my father here. He's sitting in the back. Um, anything else? Uh, there are there are, there's a few unspoken ones I know prayer requests I know of. God knows the need. I ask you to remember those first. Anything else? Well, if not, then let us uh, go to the Lord with our our prayer concerns. Heavenly Father, you've heard our prayer concerns spoken out loud, as well, as well as the ones that are in our hearts, Lord. We place them in your care, Lord. Watch over those needs. Provide for those who are in need. and Help them to trust in you. Lord, heal those who are not well and bring comfort and peace to them as well and their families, Lord. You've heard our unspoken requests and the ones that are in our heart, Lord. Watch over those concerns, Lord. Lord, just help us all to trust in you more, to believe and to trust that you are the miracle worker, that through you all things are possible. Miracles can happen, Lord, because of you. Lord, we thank you for your many blessings. Lord, help us to keep those blessings close to us as reminders of your presence in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And uh, just a reminder, uh, we'll have the doxology here in a moment on page 95 in the hymnal, but just a reminder, we have our offering boxes straight back and by the elevator, and then we also have other ways you can give online or by mail. We thank you all for that. And now let's praise the Lord for his many blessings. I invite you to stand if you're able. may be seated. Thank you. Have you ever been on top of the world? Where you were just at the top of the mountain and nothing was going to stop you. But then something stops you. And the next moment, you're in the dumps. And you feel like it's the end of the world. We're going to see this morning that 
Peter was feeling that way. We're going to see that Jesus had some harsh words for Peter because Peter and the others didn't understand. They didn't understand what it meant for Jesus to be the Messiah. And Jesus is going to teach us, as he did them, about what that means for him to be the Messiah. And what it means for us to follow him. Let's pray and ask God to speak to us as we read Matthew chapter 16, verses 21 through 28. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, anoint us all with your Holy Spirit, that as we read and listen to your word, that your word may transform our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Beginning in verse 21. From that time, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised the third day. Then Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, Far be it from you, Lord, this shall not happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, me, Satan. You are an offense to me, for you are not mindful of the things of God, but the things of men. Then Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? For the Son of Man will come in the glory of his Father with his angels and, and then he will reward each according to his works. Assuredly, I say to you, there are some standing here who shall not taste death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. So we see in verses 21 through 23, there was a common thought. Okay. There was a common thought leading up to this that, you know, Jesus was going to come as a conquering king. He was going to be, you know, come in kind of like in some of those old movies, you know, where you see the warrior come in and just, in one fell swoop, just take all the bad guys out. And he makes his presence known and he. Tough and tall and strong. And and that's what they were expecting. This king that would just come in and just take over. However, Jesus instead came as a suffering servant Messiah. And he points that out in verse 21. In the uh, second part, second half of verse 21, he says, and suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised the third day. So Jesus says he will go to Jerusalem. He says he will suffer many things from the religious leaders. He says he's going to be killed. And finally, he says he will rise from the dead on the third day. Jesus was very Specific, And the disciples, they were starting to finally get with the program. They were starting to realize what was going on. But you ever been in a situation where like you, you knew God was working and you recognized it, but you really didn't like the direction it was going in? And maybe it made you feel uncomfortable or you were concerned about you wanted this, but God wanted that instead. Well, 
They didn't like what they were hearing. And in verse 22, you see Peter you know, saying, you know, essentially, this is not going to happen to you, Lord. And we see later in the Gospels that Peter even takes measures to try to prevent Jesus from being arrested. You know, Jesus is their teacher, their friend, their master. He's their Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Peter and the other disciples didn't think the Messiah should suffer. They didn't think he should be hurt by the evil guys. That he should be the one, he should be the warrior that's fighting the evil forces. They should be the one being tortured and suffering, not him. But what they didn't understand was this was all God's will. It was necessary for Jesus to die. And, and Jesus knew why it was necessary for his death, and he was not going to let anybody stand in his way from fulfilling the Father's will. Which is why, in verse 23, you see that he had a harsh re response for Peter. He looks at Peter and he said, Get behind me, Satan! Can you imagine how Peter must have felt? That had to have really hurt him. Out of all the names that Jesus could have called him, he called him Satan. That just really sting and hurt. It had to sting him hard. But you know, you know, Peter, here's Peter. He was on the top of the world. You know, he had been celebrated by Jesus because of his great faith and having the understanding that Jesus was the Messiah. And now here's Jesus calling him Satan. You know, Peter, he had to have been thinking, you know, I, I just love him. I, don't, I want what's best for Jesus. I don't want him to suffer. And here he is calling me Satan. But you know, Peter is doing what I do sometimes and what a lot of us do sometimes. You know, Peter was determining what was best for Peter. Peter was not concerned about God's will. And then in the rest of verse 23, you see Jesus scolding Peter for putting his human needs before God's will. You know, Jesus scolded Peter because he loves Peter. He didn't, but he didn't want anything or anyone to distract him from his purpose. And it's important to remember here that Satan was trying to sneak his way into the picture to tempt Jesus. And he used one of Jesus' most beloved disciples. But Jesus was not going to have any of it. And we, individually, have got to remember that Satan tries to deceive us each and every day and tries to tempt us through any way he can. And sometimes he'll even tempt you through people who you love and who love you, who normally do have your best interest in mind. It may be somebody that you respect. But Satan will use whatever means necessary to try to throw you off the path. But Jesus didn't fall for it. He was faithful. He was focused on his mission. You know, Peter wasn't being a bad guy. He was genuinely concerned. He was just misguided in the approach he was taking. And sometimes we encounter that in our lives, where it's not that they, a, the person means harm. They're misguided. And we're going to talk about more about that here in a moment. 
But it was necessary for Jesus to be arrested, to be sentenced to death, to suffer death on the cross, to be buried, to rise again, and then to ascend back into heaven. You know, if none of that happened, we would all be lost in our sins. We would be rudderless. We would be like that boat out on the water that had no navigation, no direction. In verses 24 through 28, we learn that not only is it necessary for Jesus to die, but it's necessary for us to die as well. As I mentioned here a moment ago, a few minutes ago, you know, Jesus stayed committed to the past because he knew the rewards were so much greater than the sacrifice. And Jesus said the, same, said the same thing for us. That the reward we get from sacrificing is far greater. It's much greater. We have to remember that if we, if we want to save our lives, we must be willing to lose our lives. Any sacrifice in this life we make because of Jesus we're going to find a real life in Him. And Jesus is talking about real sacrifice, not just that comfortable sacrifice. He wants us to ignore the naysayers who may mean well, who may try to talk us out of it, Maybe on the surface, it doesn't make any sense what the Lord is calling us to do. But He wants us to give up our comfort. That's what it means to take up our cross and follow Him. He wants real sacrifice. But some of us aren't willing to give up our comfort or to step out in our faith to follow Jesus. We're content. We're content with patting ourselves on the back that we're doing enough. We're doing enough. No one else is doing what I'm doing. We're doing enough. No. That's not what he wants from us. He doesn't want us patting ourselves on the back. He wants us to give up our comfort. He wants us to give up our habits, our pride. He wants us to give up our prejudices. He wants us to give up our agendas, our desire for power and control. You know, the me, 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 I, 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 those words don't exist for Jesus. I want to share from, it was from our Bible study lesson last week. And it's from the Masticato book, A Love Worth Giving. We're going to talk about a, I'm going to read about here about a remarkable woman. You know your love is real when you weep with those who weep and rejoice with those who rejoice. You know your love is real when you feel for others what Catherine Laws felt for the inmates of Sing Sing Prison. When her husband Louis became the warden in 1921, she was a young mother of three daughters. Everybody warned her never to step foot inside those walls. But she didn't listen to them. When the first prison basketball game was held, in she went, three girls in tow, and took a seat in the bleachers with the inmates. She once said, my husband and I are going to take care of these men, and I believe they're going to take care of me. I don't have to worry. 
When she heard that one convicted murderer was blind, she taught him Braille so he could read. Upon learning of inmates who were hearing impaired, she studied sign language so they could communicate. For 16 years, Catherine Walls softened the hard hearts of the men of Sing Sing. In 1937, the world saw the difference real love makes. The prisoners knew something was wrong with Lewis Walls, didn't report to work. Quickly, word spread that Catherine had been killed in a car accident. The following day, her body was placed in her home, three quarters of a mile from the prison. As the acting warden took his early morning walk, he noticed a large gathering at the main gate. Every prisoner pressed against the fence, eyes awash with tears, faces solemn. No one spoke or moved. They'd come to stand as close as they could to the woman who'd given them love. The warden make, made a remarkable decision. All right, men, you can go. Just be sure to check in, excuse me, tonight. These were America's hardest criminals, murderers, robbers. These men the nation had locked away for life, but the warden unlocked the gate for them, and they walked without an escort or guard to the home of Catherine Walls to pay their last respects. And to a man, each one returned. Real love changes people. She was willing to give up her comfort. She was willing to do what everyone around her was telling her not to do. In some ways, in a lot of ways, she was doing what Jesus did. He said, get behind me, Satan. She was willing to get out of her comfort zone. And she made a difference in the lives of those men. And here we are, 80, 90 years later, still talking about this woman and what she did. Jesus wants us to give up our comfort, to step out in our faith. He wants us to do more than just talk. He wants us to do more than just talk amongst ourselves about, wouldn't it be nice if we could do this? We need to really work toward this goal. You know, Gary had it on his heart with the youth to do things to improve our youth offerings here. And now we're seeing it happen. We just didn't talk about it. We're doing something about it. And God's bringing it together, and He'll continue to bring it together. But you know, sometimes we're like Peter, where we got to have it our way. We got to have it our way. But we got to let go of our own feeling. You know, loving our neighbors means more than just loving those we want to love. You know, you know, some of us, sadly, you know, have no idea what it means to really follow Jesus because we have no idea what it means to sacrifice in order to follow Him. You know, Catherine Laws, you know, she sacrificed. I'm sure in the back of her mind, she probably really didn't know what she was in for. She probably was afraid. I mean, how could she not? Being a woman with three small kids and to be the wife of the warden. But she followed her heart. And real love can change people. Sadly, some of us have no idea what it really means to follow Jesus because we haven't been willing to make sacrifice for him. We can't experience a real life in Jesus because we haven't died 
to ourselves. Maybe we're part of the way there where we respond to His will, we follow, but we're still holding on to what we want to hold on to, hold on to some of those comfortable things. But we can't experience Him fully until we've, we've died to ourselves. Jesus said in verse 25, for whoever desires to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Well, you know, some of us haven't found it yet because we haven't lost it yet. Do you really want to know what it looks like to follow Jesus? Sacrifice for him. He wants us to take up our cross and follow Him. Sacrifice everything in order to follow Him. In verse 28, you know, we see that the disciples, they were going to see something great. They would not only see Jesus give His life on the cross, which was necessary, they were going to see Him conquer death. Rise from the grave and see Him rise to heaven. The disciples are learning what kind of Messiah Jesus would be and more and more what it, meant, what it means to be a, His disciple. And we got to learn those lessons as well. We've got to understand that, that He would suffer and that those who follow must suffer. Must be willing. The death of Jesus leads us to be dead in sin. To sin. And we have to die to the world. In the, in the temptation. we got to live for Him. And His blessings. And His rewards. So as we prepare our hearts this morning for the sacrament of Holy Communion, let us all remember that our salvation would not be possible if it weren't for the arrest, death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. These events brought forgiveness of sins for all those who trust. And I understand, believe me, I know this all too well. That to deny yourself is difficult. You know, we think about ourselves and our desires all the time. But let us use this time of communion to let the Lord work on us. To help us let go. To help us renew our lives, our hearts. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, as we prepare our hearts for Holy Communion this morning, help us, Lord, to be vessels of compassion and hope in this hurting world. Help us all to put Satan behind us and to only look forward. Help us to Cast aside the naysayers, the ones who might mean well, but may cloud our judgment sometimes. Help us, Lord, to focus solely on you and your will. Lord, help us to realize that, that sometimes you call us to do things that on the surface may look ridiculous or impossible, but you make the impossible possible. Help us to be willing to get out of our comfort zones, to be ready to step out and serve you, Lord. 
Help us to remember, Lord, that you are the one that can open doors and do open doors. You're the one that moves mountains. You're the one that you're the one that provides and sustains us. Help us all, Lord, to deny ourselves and our own desires, passions. Lord, help us to deny ourselves to be willing to put you first. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here, and on these gifts of and on these gifts, that in the breaking of this bread, in the drinking of this wine, we may know the presence of the living Christ and be renewed by the body as the body of Christ for the world redeemed by Christ's blood until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at your table forever. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. On the night he was betrayed, Jesus took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to, gave it to the disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us. Let us take a moment of silence, prayer, and reflection. Knowledge, your weaknesses, your brokenness. The altar is open to give your burdens to the Lord. May this time be a time to re energize you, renew you. And I ask uh, Nancy and Nicole to go be willing to serve this morning. And Graciously, humbly offered.
please stand and join us. As we leave here today, may we remember that we can always cast our, our cares or our worries, our burdens, we can cast them onto the Lord. He's there to carry our burdens, to provide us guidance and strength and peace. Go in peace. Amen.